Welcome to World Med School. My name is Tom Isel. I'm an associate professor in the Center of Applied Malaria Research and Evaluation in the Tulane School of Public Health and Tropical Medicine. In this micro lecture, I'm going to talk about malaria epidemiology. In this lecture, I will describe the global distribution and burden of malaria, describe the risk factors of infection and disease, and summarize current malaria control and prevention strategies. Malaria is a vector-borne parasitic disease caused by the Plasmodium parasite. Plasmodium falciparum causes the most severe form of the disease and is most common in Africa. Plasmodium vivax causes moderate to severe disease, although little death. The majority of cases are in Asia and South America. Other Plasmodium species relevant to diseases in humans include Plasmodium ovale, malariae, and nolesi. The parasite is only transmitted by the female Anopheles mosquito. The clinical case definition of malaria is anyone with a parasite infection by laboratory diagnosis with or without symptoms of disease. We can think of this as anyone who should be treated. The epidemiological case definition of malaria is anyone with a malaria parasite infection plus fever. It is important to remember that clinical cases do not always equal epidemiological cases. Globally, about 2.5 billion people are at risk of Plasmodium falciparum parasite infection. Globally, about 200 million cases of Plasmodium falciparum occur each year, with over half in Sub-Saharan Africa. Globally, Plasmodium falciparum is responsible for 500,000 deaths each year, with over 90% in Sub-Saharan Africa and most occurring in children under the age of 5. Globally, about 3 billion people are at risk of Plasmodium vivax parasite infection. Next, we will focus on the common risk factors of acquiring a malaria parasite infection as well as the risk factors of malaria. It is important to note that malaria parasite infections do not always lead to clinical disease. Key risk factors of infection include climate suitability in the form of abundant rainfall and tropical temperatures, vector competence, seasonality with a high transmission season typically following the rainy season, urban and rural residents with rural populations at the highest risk of malaria, socio-demographic characteristics, as well as man-made environmental factors. Key risk factors of disease among infected individuals include acquired immunity from past infections, which is primarily a function of age, transmission intensity, and the risk of infection. Host genetics such as the Duffy antigen null, which is protective against Plasmodium vivax, nutritional status and anemia, other infections or multiplicity of infection, access to healthcare, and pregnancy. It should be noted that women in their first two pregnancies in areas of stable Plasmodium falciparum transmission are at increased risk of malaria. Next, we will focus on the current tools available for malaria control and elimination. Slide microscopy remains the gold standard diagnosis for a parasite infection. Fortunately, new rapid diagnostic tests, or RDTs, are now available for point-of-care diagnostics. The most common type is the HRP2 antigen detection RDT. Artemisinin-based combination therapies, or ACTs, are the current first-line drug for treating Plasmodium falciparum. They are highly effective. However, it should be noted that drug resistance to artemisinin has now been detected in the greater Mekong region. The primary tools for preventing malaria transmission include indoor residual spraying and long-lasting insecticide-treated mosquito nets. Both are highly effective. Malaria during pregnancy causes morbidity for the mother and increased risk of adverse birth outcomes such as low birth weight, especially in the first two pregnancies. The primary tools for limiting malaria in pregnancy are the use of long-lasting insecticide-treated nets and intermittent preventive treatment in pregnancy, or IPTP. Thank you for studying with World Med School.